Get you around here. Okay, for those of you who have no idea what's going on right now, that's Christian from Las Vegas way back in season two, who apparently mixed up the MasterChef kitchen with a nudist colony. I mean, just look at the judges. They were probably wondering who let these two nutcases into the building in the first place. Oh, wait, it was them, wasn't it? You're kidding me. Are you competing for a MasterChef? With, is this your dish? Yes, it is my dish. Anyway, what sort of dish was this guy cooking off? Was he gonna cook up his own wife and serve it to the judges? Well, what he was actually up to was somehow even worse. The way the soy sauce was dripping everywhere. Ugh. I've watched this part of the episode a million times to prove to myself it wasn't a product of a bad trip or fever dream, but nope, it's real and just as horrible every time. Anyway, before tasting, Ramsey made something very clear. This is not the kind of place I want to find a hair in my food. Absolutely. So let's just hope the sushi is fresher than his ideas. It's an ahi tuna. Raw style. It's Hugh Hefner's breakfast. Don't ask for dessert, no. Nope, nope. Like, how was this dude that surprised? Of course we all saw the verdict coming. I have to say no. No. Here's the naked truth. Three no's. I guess he took the term body of work a bit too literally, or misunderstood what they meant when they said the dish should have soul. But at least wifey was happy, right? Gordon Ramsay ate sushi off of me. <laughs> <laughs> And I guess they've got a point. How many people can say they did something like that? But here's the best part of all of this. That's just the warm-up round. Fiesta, lime, um, it's like chicken fajitas. Or it could be a burrito. Apparently, this dish was so confusing that even the chef himself had no idea what he was making. Anyway, back to the burrito guy or fajita guy, or taco guy, who knows? Well, when Graham asked him what he brought to MasterChef, this is the response the dude coughed up. I can bring drive and energy. It's kind of giving the same energy as what happened here. I care a scale of one to 10, like a nine. I mean, you see it too, right? Anyway, Ramsey was really impressed with the burrito guy's drive and energy. So he posed him with a pretty valid question. In there, touch the MasterChef logo and shoot back. Off you go. And you can't say the guy didn't apply. I'm back. And right. go. One, two, three. He made him go to great lengths to prove his drive, only to say. How you feeling? Good. For me, it's a no. God damn, that was brutal. His smile completely disintegrated. I can't help but feel bad for the dude, but. Well, you can't say it wasn't good TV. Now, here comes someone whose dish was a good kind of weird. Meet Albert. There are two things you should know about him. One, he eats everything. I got two legs and four legs. I'm not scared of it. I've cooked coon, rattlesnake, bobcat. Except, well, this, of course. Possum. <laughs> I draw the line at possum. And two, he has some great tattoos. Got one on my butt. Would you like to see it? Yes, please. <laughs> Not too close. Just from a distance, just in case. You want to see the devil? <laughs> There's the devil. Woo! I guess you could say he was ready to work his ass off. Ah? Uh, anyway, here's what this crazy dude was cooking up. Wash your hands before you continue plating that dish. <laughs> Interestingly, it was Joe's very first experience eating a reptile of any sort. <laughs> Gotta say, I'm a little surprised given that he's someone who's so cultured. But million dollar question, how did he like it? But this was a joke. And when I tasted it. Well, let me fast forward a few hundred years when he actually got around to giving his answer. Delicious. The stock is soulful, complex. The alligator is toothsome and flavorful, and it's it's really, really great. Hey, a win's a win. But let's hear what Ramsey had to say. Fish resembles you 100%. Like a big, overgrown mess. But wait, let's not get bogged down in first impressions. You've delivered. There's a flavor there. 
Do you have surprise? I'm telling you, I am going to give it my shot, and I will do whatever it takes to become the next Master Chef. So ultimately, what was the verdict? Yes. Graham, I'm a yes. You heard my vote. You're a yes, man. All right, yes. Yep, the judges were betting big on his ass. Do me a favor. Hey, keep those pants up. <laughs> <laughs> if you say so. <laughs> Anyway, that's enough auditions for now. Doctor says it's not good for my blood pressure. So moving on to an idiot who actually made it into the real deal show. In season two, episode seven, Adrian won the mystery box challenge and got a choice between coffee, pineapples, and nuts in the pantry. So guess what he chose for himself? I pick nuts. <laughs> is there anyone who is a little bit jealous of Adrian's Nuts. <laughs> As for the rest of them... Coffee. Yeah! Well, skipping forward past a 90-minute slog of a cook, Mr. Winner was up first with his chocolate tort. All of them, sadly. Every kind. Is that like a normal thing you've seen before a cake with every nut known to humanity in it? Not exactly winning material. I guess you could say he went nuts. Incredible advantage and squandered it. Uh, and Graham felt the same way. Well, it seems like you chose chocolate as your ingredient. The nuts are just kind of a garnish on top. And if the two of them are pissed, you better believe that Ramsey's beyond saving. Because you can't really identify what we've done different from the nuts on top to the nuts inside that mixture. But the worst was yet to come. Max Kramer, Trump's biggest sycophant, was going to get convicted for that steaming pile of crap he played in. What the hell is that? <laughs> I mean, crepe. Crepe and mascarpone layer cake. 15 crepes. 15 crepes. Stacked together. 15 crepes in there? About, about that much. Okay. But, you know, crap may have been more accurate, considering it resulted in one of the most iconic lines in the history of the show. To do this with me, you have to taste that. It's like I've just gone to the doctors for a skin graft on my butt. Yeah. And mm -hmm. suck. God, that never gets old. Horrible, weird <laughs> texture. And the judges certainly weren't getting tired of making fun of it either. <laughs> that good. Seriously, what even was this? 15 crepes piled together, each less flavorful than the last. He might as well have stacked paper towels instead and saved himself the effort. I don't get a lot of coffee flavor at all. I don't much of anything aside from the weird texture. I would be worried, actually, with what you made here. Would you believe me if I told you that we're only gonna get weirder from here? Well, Alejandra served a coffee cream tart, and one look at it immediately sent Joe off the rails. Those ingredients were gonna be like somehow cooked. This is everything I tasted, I think, raw. What happened? So her excuse was that she was inexperienced with desserts. And maybe that would have flown in episode four, but not here. I didn't give it the proper time to cool in the refrigerator before serving it. Um, I'm sorry, this is a poorly executed dish. I, I, I'm aware. It's almost a poorly executed is the understatement of the century. Halfway through and assembled the dish and presented it. A little strange. But honestly, for all of Joe's anger, Ramsey's disappointment hit just that bit harder. As bad as that, it's a mess and it's a great shame. Damn. Up next, Jenny served a coffee-infused tart with orange blossom cream. Sounds appetizing, delicate and citrusy. But, and I cannot stress this enough, it was a big but. It's not cooked all the way through. I put it in too late. So it's raw. Yeah, what a shame. She tried to make a flimsy excuse, but considering she was up against Joe, I think you have a fair idea of what happened. It's totally raw, but it's the top is edible. Well, the, the opposite of being cooked is raw, right? So it's sure. raw. His reaction is gonna tell you everything you need to know. Ugh. But I won't say no to a little more Ramsey. Huh? Excuse me. It's an embarrassment. And he was far from done. You'd stage a trip up and smash the plate on the way up here. That is hideous. Come with yeah, a dish so bad that Ramsey advises you to fake a fall on your way up. Now that's something. 
So, with that serving as the vibe check of the whole situation, it's safe to say there wasn't a calm head in that room. It's not cooked, that's ill-conceived, is dangerous. That is reckless. Not even Ramsey, who usually does his best not to go full HK on this show. John, I'm pissed off. We give you every tool that's possible to make you guys shine, and f me do we want you to shine, I swear to God. But what's worse, he felt really, really let down. I feel like giving up. Now, will these nervous hopefuls be able to salvage and redeem themselves and give Ramsey his will to live back? What is that? It's the coffee sauce, Jeff. Well, that's gonna be a no. Alvin made coffee-filled beignets with chicory pudding. Ramsey took a bite and immediately questioned all the life choices that led up to this moment. There's like a coffee blood clot. Not a single good dessert, not even a decent one. I mean, they don't expect Willy Wonka levels of reality-bending patisserie, but come on. But what made it even worse was the way that Alvin tried to argue that it was all because he wasn't given enough resting time. But Graham immediately corrected him. At my restaurant, we use some of these techniques, you know? But we never go around and try to trumpet that we're using it because it works and it speaks for itself. And the guy seemed to be personally offended with that pudding uh, thingy. Give what I personally do day in and day out a bad name. And you know what? I am too. Now, in the ninth episode of that same season, they did a complete 180 from the Sweet Tooth Challenge I just showed you and went all in on the vegetables. But there was a catch. No salads or side dishes allowed. Yeah, they were actually gonna need to cook something. Imagine that. Well, when the judges stepped into the ring to peruse the dishes in the middle of the cook, Ramsey came to the conclusion that one of them was going nowhere fast. The lack of protein, no meat, no fish, put that person into obscurity. And who might that be? Christian. So Ramsey immediately started poking holes in the thing. It wasn't cohesive. It wasn't properly thought through, and the whole sort of style of the dish was strange. But Christian wasn't buying it. The dude actually got pretty offended. I think you're on. I don't think my dish is the worst dish here. And he didn't come this far to humble himself in course correct now. Esther's dish looked pretty Think what you want. Oh yeah, things were gonna go down before long right to disagree but we're telling you the way we see it and we thought the dish sucked and go down they did when ramsey couldn't help but step back into the ring i agree with you well, we're trying to give you constructive criticism if you're a man you take it on the chin god seeing him put people in their place never gets old unfortunately your talent's not matching your arrogance the dish was a letdown now fast forward a bit and Jennifer won the mystery box and was presented with three options straight from Whitney's cookbook. And she wasn't just some random woman who walked onto the soundstage. She won the entire show in its first season. Anyway, option one. Berry chipotle barbecue chicken with potato salad and grilled asparagus. Option two. And grits with andouille sausage and a roasted red pepper sauce and herb salad. And last but not least, catfish. Served with the most amazing fragrant purple slaw, and then stunning, beautiful sweet potato fries. And this was the all too familiar recreation challenge, but there was a catch. You will have to do it without a recipe. I mean, I can't say that's not interesting, but before long, the truth came out. Catfish. Now, when the contestants actually got cooking, Alejandra completely lost the plot and overlooked five key ingredients, and even threw in some of her own for good measure. In a dill tartare, did you taste raw garlic? Like, what was she trying to do? Ward off vampires? I think she had something to drink for him. That was a very big... Graham's reaction was pretty telling. And while the guy was hacking up a lung, Joe set the record straight. It's the topping. So high to so low in one day. And now Derek's turn was up. 
but his fish coating was a complete disaster. And Graham took him to task over it. Get kind of fish, and then all of this heaviness just coating the top. It just doesn't know justice. But the question remained would it be enough to land him in the bottom three? Almost like skin, soggy crap, and it's bland and it's oily. You seriously missed the trick. Well, if that's the verdict, I sure hope so. When Adrian presented his dish, it was clear his plating didn't match Whitney. Making sure that it tasted right, that the plating just... And it immediately set Joe off. High stakes, big prize. I just don't understand how these things can go so wrong. Joe wasn't even impressed with the flavors. And to really twist the knife, he took it upon himself to plate it properly, showcasing how little time it actually took to get it right. All right, so you take this, you put it here, like it was on Whitney's dish, you take two pieces of fish, you put it over it, you take the tartar sauce, you put it in the front, put some fries on the side, right? Voila. Because, like, if you can't even manage that, why bother? Difficult to understand that concept? Anyway, next up was Jenny, who admitted it was her first time frying fish, and it showed. It's so salty. The texture on the slaw. But not even her slaw was gonna save her. It looks like somebody pre-chewed it. When Ramsey got his hands on it, he was determined to completely ruin her career. I didn't think anyone could match Alejandra or Derek. Disgusting. Meanwhile, Joe did his best to match Ramsey's energy. Create something that at least looked like it. You know, this looks like, you know, it, it's... But we all know that, try as he might, those are heights that he's just not built to reach. I don't even know what to say. But all that aside, this kind of reminds me of another dish from season 13. Episode 8, in fact. Now, before I begin, here's an important piece of information that you should know. Ramsey's been around the world and knows a whole lot about pretty much any cuisine you can think of. And Indian cuisine was one that he was even more familiar with than the rest. 99% of the food in the UK regarding the curries are all from North India, Delhi. Like, he went on a journey to the birthplace of freaking naan and butter chicken. How does this compare with what you had? Yeah, I mean that already? It's chalk and cheese. So if you want to try and pull the wool over his eyes, good luck. No, it, it doesn't taste taint, tartar. You know, it's not like it's been laced with tomato puree. Well, I sure hope that's not foreshadowing for anything. Well, back to the episode. The mystery ingredient for the home cooks was a simple whole chicken. And given Purvi's mastery of her native cuisine, Ramsay was practically salivating. <laughs> I love butter oh, chicken. Oh, I'm so glad that I'm making this. I went to where it was first thought out. Moti Mohill. It was beautiful. Yeah, it's just... But we wouldn't be talking about her if she actually made anything worth a damn. Inviting and warm and it's got that fragrance to it, but it looks dull. Shall we? Yep. I mean, I guess one could argue that it looked pretty colorful, but let's get down to what really matters. The taste. And so I'm saddened because I just know this is not the best butter chicken that you ever made. And, oh no, he wasn't gonna stop there. This is oozing of raw spice. And then unfortunately, as you can see... And the piece de resistance, one minor hiccup. The denseness of the bread is actually, it's raw. That needs to be rolled super thin there. Thank you, Perry. On the other hand, Sarah's chicken roulade came out dry beyond belief. And her own wasn't going to cut her any slack over it. Reminds me of a lot of those Italian chain restaurants, and that's not a good thing. And you know, when Joe stepped up, he said one of the very few things I actually agree with him on. But the resting time is just as significant and important as the cooking time. You gave yourself double jeopardy at a point where you had a 10-minute penalty. Yes, you played it all wrong. I mean, the dish completely crumbled. The filling has no reference. It's obviously falling apart in the dish. It's promise. Thank you, sir. Yep. Then Jennifer's roasted chicken breast came out about as ugly as humanly possible. And leave it to Ramsey to really steal the words out of my mouth. 
and Joe felt like the chicken was an afterthought in comparison to the rest of the fixings. But the risotto was completely overcooked too. And the risotto is arborio rice done with New Orleans mirepoix. And it's not really a dish, you know, for me it's just like a chicken breast that's seasoned. After a pretty short deliberation, the judges reached a tough decision. Things were so bad that two people were going home tonight. And ultimately, Sarah, of course, got cut, but Pervy did too. When I first watched this episode, I was like, it's unbelievable that Pervy got sent home instead of Jennifer, who was a double threat of mediocrity. Meanwhile, Pervy has looked pretty good, to be honest. She even had this to say. I think, I don't remember which one of the judges did taste it, my sauce, and they said it was good. So I was fully confident that I will be in top four. The reviews of her dish were pretty vague. The spice wasn't toasted and the naan was slightly, slightly undercooked. Felt like they were nitpicking with her, honestly. And in usual fashion, the way Joe talked about Pervy's butter chicken, as if he knew better than her what it should look or taste like, came off as really entitled too. This doesn't taste like the Jennifer that I know. I'm so sorry. Like, at least Ramsey went and did the legwork. Now, creating truly delicious Indian food can be challenging without the proper setup and ingredients. Like, have you ever seen a tandoor in the MasterChef kitchen? I haven't. The naan I cooked was perfectly done, so I was, and I started doing something else, so half of that naan was burnt. But look, I get it. If she made a bad dish, she made a bad dish. Just because she's Indian doesn't mean she's automatically great at making butter chicken. But it was odd. Her dish didn't seem terrible enough to warrant a double elimination. It was just a bit underwhelming. It really didn't seem like she deserved to go home. I started doing something else, so half of that naan was burnt. So I had to cook another one, and I didn't have time. Yeah, then again, it is up there with Ramsey's favorite dishes, and tasting the authentic stuff in Delhi has got to make everything else taste like ash in your mouth. Anyway, loads of thoughts on this one, but I gotta move on. I'd love to hear your take on it, though. Now, how could I forget this visionary dish? Spice spring roll has mint and strawberry pieces and a sriracha jelly dipping sauce. Disgusting right off the bat. It's giving white chocolate on caviar vibes. So in the 10th episode of season six for the elimination challenge, our gorgeous diva Tommy challenged the contestants to make an elevated dish inspired by PB&J. To start off though, a certain someone forgot the main freaking ingredients in the pantry. Why are you shaking your head? I didn't get peanut butter and jelly. It's mind boggling how she managed to dodge elimination after emptying two full baskets from the pantry, missing everything that was essential while she was at it. You didn't get peanut butter or jelly. It was, it's my mistake. You know it's an elimination test though. I do, chef. Hedel and Olivia had to bail her out last minute, too. Please tell me you got peanut butter. Olivia hooked me up with some jam. Hethlo gave me a whole jar of peanut butter. Wow, lucky girl. What are you making? However, what followed was not a stroke of improvised genius, but rather the most mismatched attempt at creativity I think I've ever seen. And it had to be up there for Ramsey, too. Uh, that looks like a stuffed condom. If it sounds that strange on paper, Oh boy, I can't even imagine the taste. Uh, it's just way, way off the mark. Ground beef and strawberries do not go ever, ever. You're not going to convince me. But Shelly seemed bizarrely proud of it. Go figure. Then Sarah dropped some famous last words. Dish a thousand times, and I know it tastes good. This is just guaranteed spot top ten, man. Ooh, I think I've seen this film before. I folded it with a little bit of creme fraiche to just loosen it up, and then I folded it into the pastry cream. So, she came up with her dish, but I'm not even gonna bother describing it. None of that even matters because Gordon couldn't taste any peanut butter at all. Butter and jelly. I'm gonna be frank, that is the first dish tonight that I cannot taste any peanut butter. And with a dumbstruck smile awkwardly plastered on her face, Sarah decided that this is the perfect moment to argue with Gordon Ramsay of all people about what he can or cannot taste. To me, it tastes like a peanut butter and strawberry jam sandwich. 
upon Sarah's insistence that she had indeed used peanut butter, Ramsey shot it down for the complete impossibility that it was. Teaspoon. Tablespoons of peanut butter that and I The rest is in. peanut butter. Really? Impossible. Even the color doesn't look anywhere near as dark as peanut butter. And then she did the unthinkable. Oh. About your performance, um, it's bland. You've missed the point. That's it. And Ramsey honestly had no choice but to conclude that she clearly didn't care and just turned on his heel and walked away. Now, this one's a bit complicated. That laughter could have been an awkward defense mechanism in reaction to the overwhelming pressure, or maybe Occam's razor. She was brain dead deluded enough to laugh at the one person who could help her out of this mess. Either way, Graham didn't like it either. It gets a little doughy, and it definitely doesn't have that peanut butter jelly. And he made that abundantly clear. I am not really a fan of this. I didn't think it was. But Sarah was adamant. Maybe the only person that's gonna like it apart from you is Shelly. Thanks, right, Sarah. Thank you. But before long, Shelly and Sarah ended up in the bottom too. The duo stepped forward with Shelly looking visibly deflated and Sarah oddly bubbly. Huh. Maybe that is her default under pressure, I guess. Ramsey explained that tonight's decision came down to who they thought was the most teachable and who would continue to grow. And with that, it couldn't be more obvious who was going to be leaving. Although, can you really teach someone who puts strawberries and in beef inside of a spring roll? Personally, I would have dismissed both of them. Like, the pervy situation proved that they're capable of pulling double eliminations for a whole lot less. But now, season six, episode 13. I'm not gonna even elaborate on that. If you know, you know. Under here is one of my absolute favorite things to make and to eat. Well, maybe a little context is warranted. Steven was given a choice between three Southern classics for his fellow contestants to cook. And all of them were winners. Shrimp and grits. Simple, homey, but it's not easy to get right. The second one was even better. Totally different techniques. Nowhere near as easy as it looks. No. Like, I think I could eat all three plates right now and still be hungry. It takes a lot of skill to get right. You have to be precise and make sure you get the balance of flavors absolutely spot on. But I mean, gumbo? Yeah, go ask Antonia from Hell's Kitchen Season 8. She'll tell you all you need to know about that delicacy. Anyway, Stephen picked chicken and waffles, so it didn't really even matter. Fast forward to cooking time. Shelly was found struggling to produce even one properly colored waffle over the course of an entire hour. I didn't like the brownie, so I went back no. in with it, and then it got all weird. What style of chicken? Where we go? With just minutes left, she poured another batch of fresh batter for her umpteenth attempt. Six different waffles, none of them have color. How? Christina saw that Shelly was overthinking it, but at this point, it was too late to get any reasonable color on either the chicken or the waffle. Where's this dish is in their wheelhouse and they just completely fail. Moving forward to tasting time. Claudia's cayenne chicken and sweet waffle wasn't spared from a serious dressing down when it was brought up. Terrible. It looks like it's just come out of a diner. That wasn't even the biggest issue. Unfortunately, it's still pink. He then asked her to touch the waffle and was about to drop a comparison you'll never see coming. Soft, spongy, and just horrible. Here's the thing. Now, Claudia tried to explain that she didn't have enough time to finish garnishing, but Ramsey cut her off, reprimanding her for asking for more time when Derek managed to do twice as well in half the time. Dare you ask for more time when there's a guy standing behind you that had half your time. Like, it's night and day. Has just put you to the back of the line. Up next was Nick's attempt. His big star being horseradish maple syrup. Yes, that is actually a real thing that he actually tried. Horseradish has nothing to do with desert style cuisine. Chicken, good flavor. Love the bacon. Katrina's miso chicken was a letdown as well. Disappointed. The problem with the tenders, they can go dry because there's no fat in there. Okay. The waffles are. And for a hat trick of mediocrity, Olivia's honey and soy glazed chicken was pretty underwhelming too. The waffle 
I think it's okay. But definitely, I think you could have done a lot better. But the star was Shelly, whose plate looked worse than something the overnight crew at Denny's would cook up. And what's worse, she knew that she had screwed up. I know my waffle's a little blonde, and my plating isn't like, wow. Ramsey then flipped over the chicken and found it was already cut. Shelly explained she did it to make sure it was done. To make sure it was done? Yeah, chef. So is it done? Yeah, I didn't want to get raw chicken. Oh, Shelly. Even from a single glance, it was clear the chicken was still pink, and Ramsey saw it too. He then asked about the chicken back on her cutting board, wondering if that one was cooked. And well, according to her, it was. Where are they? Um, well, are they cooked? Like, how much of a space case do you have to be to leave the good piece behind? On the bench and serve me the pink chicken. It was a complete mess. And um, it's a shame. A waffle that doesn't really taste of anything. But was there anything redeemable on that plate? You think? And a fruit salad or just chopped strawberries. At this stage of the competition. Of course not. Which left Shelly with only one recourse. I know what I can do, and I know I'm capable, and I know I'm not a failure. But it wasn't enough to save her, and she was eliminated, which let's admit, was long overdue. And you know what else is long overdue? You getting in the comments to tell me what other mindless monstrosities have made it to the plate. But while you're at it, don't forget to drop a like, subscribe, and turn on my post notifications too. And until next time, go ahead and check out this next video right here.